Yeah, g'day viewers. It's going from my collection, and I, and I figured that I've got a number of interesting Cold War era Soviet clocks that have been accumulating for a while. So I've just thought I'll put these together and we'll uh, have a quick look at them. Uh, these all date uh, from the 1980s. I think some of them marked 1984 uh, when they were manufactured. So these couple here are the probably earlier ones because they use the individual vacuum fluorescent display tube which looks like a uh, Nixie tube so I've got one here. So it's in a glass envelope. You see all the wired connections. And it goes to the uh, digits. So, uh, I had an old circuit board from a clock that had no case, but so I have this old uh, regulator instrument and I'll put the board in the in that just to make it look pretty. The old instrument had been underwater must have got pretty wet at some stage so all the moving mechanism inside was pretty well fallen apart so couldn't save it but the enclosure itself cleaned up pretty well and you know, it looks pretty smicky with a uh, clock module inside it. Okay, coming over here now this one's a little bit later, so it uses a one-piece VFD display. And uh, when I got this clock, we could hardly read it. All the elements were pretty well burnt out. So that was the original element. But the great thing about all the Soviet stuff is that there's still plenty of parts to be found on eBay. So anyway, I replaced the display component and also the electrolytic capacitors on the board they are faulty as well so change those out now it works quite nicely that big one at the back is one of the larger style clocks that uses a dot matrix type of setup which is combined with individual tubes and that's supposed to be displaying 11.42 but one of those elements is not working. I end up replacing all of these because they were all heavily burnt out and one of the new ones I put in died very quickly so I'll need to change that as well but we can have a look at the element here. Yeah sort of seven dots with a phosphor on board. You can see that's the old one that's heavily uh, burnt. I think they're an IV26 type freeze. Also found on the internet. And uh, this is just a, an early uh, clock for a motor car. So it's in the days before cars came out of clock so this would have been a fairly fancy feature for your dashboard. It's an old one I picked up from somewhere but I've wired it and yeah it works well as a clock. Oh, a few other bits and pieces. This is, was a, probably an old uh, counter for a, a like an early Geiger counter. I think I've put this on a video before anyway. Got it running here just to make it look beautiful. They use uh, Decatron display tubes. They're set up as a 1 to 10 register. So it steps around. That's on a test mode, but normally we connect it to a Geiger Mueller tube, and that would just count the radiation events passing through the tube.
Yeah, this is a uh, Hewlett Packard counter timer unit. I've just put that on a test mode as well so you can see how the uh, Nixie tubes increment. So they, these are very similar to the vacuum fluorescent display tubes, individual tubes with wild elements with a neon gas fill. Yeah, a lot of people turn these things into clocks and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I've just been playing around with it and just use it as a frequency counter. It's actually quite accurate. Run some tests against another counter I've got and yeah, all its measured values are the same. Oh yeah, I forgot to show this one. Uh, this is one of those, uh, I think they call them an ice tube uh, clock kits you can buy on the net. I think it's from Cosbo or something like that. Yeah, quite beautiful. Thing. Another Russian VFD. Yeah, okay, we'll take the back off this clock now. We'll have a look inside. So there's the date, 1987. Serial number 220 volts, 50 cycles. 250 milliamps. Okay, this is your mains entry. Comes in, it's been, looks like a cord's been replaced or something. Got, your, got a fuse, your transformer. Uh, there's the, now the clock board. Got the crystal and the calibration for it there, potential we'll do for the calibration. And got your counter chips and things. And this has a bundle of batteries to hold the time if the power goes out. Your double A cells. Here we are, we've got the whole tube array exposed. There's your groups of tubes for the uh, numerals. Have to be very careful when you're soldering on these boards. Too much heat and it will lift the solder tracks off. That's the problem tube there, so we'll replace that and hopefully this thing will work again. The faulty VFD tube has, has been replaced. And this is the one I took out. Yeah, no signs of burning on the phosphor or any sign of air getting into this tube. 
maybe the filament has gone open circuit I'll test that later and see what it is but anyway it has been replaced so let's give it a test well there it is it is working again No, that's very good. Here are your buttons. That's your brightness control. You can see how that tube element I put in is a bit brighter than the other ones. The other ones have had a little bit of more running time on them. But probably over time that'll match their brightness, I hope. Reset.